Hello again. Well, I hope everyone has enjoyed lunch. I now have the pleasure, with the assistance of Case President John Lippincott, of introducing today's award winners to you. Each year, Case recognizes outstanding work in advancement by schools, colleges, and universities as judged by peer professionals through its Circle of Excellence Awards. A select few receive a Circle of Excellence Grand Gold Award. In 2012, just 19 Grand Golds were awarded from more than 2,800 entries. And one of those 19 Grand Gold winners was an independent school. It is now my honor to present Case's highest honor for work in advancement, a Circle of Excellence Grand Gold Award to George School in Newtown, Pennsylvania for Compendium, a 114-page view book used as part of its student recruiting program. Accepting the Grand Gold uh, for George School are Nancy Starmer, Head of School, Ari Re uh, Retoff, Director of Advancement, and Odie Lefevre, Director of Communications and Marketing, who led the effort for Compendium. Will the three of you please join us? <laughs> Let me first let me first say that the George School is not a stranger to these awards, as it has won 17 Circle of Excellence Awards since 1900, 1990, excuse me. <laughs> Nobody on this podium is that old. Maybe John. And this is not its first Grand Gold. The George School won a Grand Gold Award in 2006 in the Individual Student Recruitment Publication category. Today we honor the George School for outstanding work on another recruitment publication. The George School Compendium is a collection of photos, essays, facts, and observations about the Quaker boarding school from students, alumni, parents, faculty, and staff. In their review, the judges noted that the book's, quote, classic line drawings, beautiful images, and typography convey a strong sense of place. One judge remarked, quote, this book made you want to know more about that school. It feels like required reading, but reading that you want to do, close quote. Please join me in congratulating George School for being selected as a Circle of Excellence Grand Gold winner in the Student Recruitment Publications category. The next awards honor three individuals and one foundation for extraordinary contributions to independent schools and to the independent school sector. The Independent Schools Awards recognize staff, volunteers, and friends of independent schools who have consistently raised the bar for the field of educational advancement. It is now my pleasure to present the 2013 Independent Schools Award winners. The first award is the Support Staff Distinguished Service Award, which honors an advancement staff member for long-term dedicated service. This year's recipient is Brenda Janowitz, Senior Advancement Administrator for Harvard Westlake School. Ms. Janowitz, would you please join us? <laughs> Ms. Janowitz has been an integral part of Harvard-Westlake for the past 16 years. 
With her encyclopedic knowledge of the school's various constituents, her grasp of a complex proprietary database, and unflagging attention to the smallest details, Ms. Janowitz is a vital member of the school's advancement team. In, in a letter of support, Harvard Westlake President Thomas Hudnut writes that, quote, all roads in our advancement effort lead through her, through her and from her. She is an, an indispensable link that makes everything else run smoothly, close quote. Perhaps President Hudnut sums up Ms. Janowitz's contribution to Harvard-Westlake with these words. Again, I quote, Brenda is legendary for the accuracy of her work and her ability to get comparable work out of her colleagues. In my 26 years as leader of this school, I can think of no one in the Harvard-Westlake's employ who has done a better job or meant more to her colleagues than Brenda Janowitz. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Brenda Janowitz for the 2013 Support Staff Distinguished Service Award. I should stand over here so you can see me. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank Case. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank all my colleagues that are here and those at home supporting me. Uh, I work with the greatest people in the world, I would say. And thank you very much. And Gary, you are the most handsome. <laughs> thank you. Oops. Thank you, Brenda, and, and congratulations once again. That's a low five. <laughs> now I am honored to present the John R. Chandler Award, named for the former special assistant to the headmaster at Hotchkiss School, and one of the first independent school professionals to serve on CASE's Board of Trustees. The award honors a corporation or foundation for outstanding contributions to independent schools. This year's recipient is the Longwood Foundation of Wilmington, Delaware. Accepting the award is Thayer DuPont, president of the foundation. Mr. DuPont, would you please join me at the lectern? Since its foundation, founding in 1937, the Longwood Foundation has made more than $2 billion in grants to nonprofit organizations that serve people, the environment, and communities in Delaware and southern Chester County in Pennsylvania. The foundation's annual giving totals $32 million, of which a significant portion goes to support independent, Catholic, Montessori, and many other schools in the Delaware and Pennsylvania area. It also recently expanded its giving to support public and charter schools. During the past 23, 25 years, the foundation has contributed more than 8.5 million to support capital improvements at Wilmington Friends School, which nominated the foundation for this award. Brian K. Garman, head of school at Wilmington Friends, writes in his nominating letter that the partnership goes beyond that of grantor and grantee. And I quote, when our school suffered a fire that destroyed our, gym, our auditorium and gym, Longwood President Thayer DuPont was one of the first to contact me to ask how the foundation could help. The call was welcomed, but not surprising as Longwood has always had a deep interest in supporting education throughout the region." Close quote. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the Longwood Foundation as this year's winner of the John R. 
Chandler Award. Thank you, and thank you to the foundation for the recognition. Uh, I'm, I'm here, of course, to represent the foundation, Longwood Foundation, and frankly, the award has little to do with me. I've only been there a couple of years, but this is clearly the product of hard work, the judgment and wise actions of my predecessors and the trustees, and we appreciate the recognition. Fundamentally, we believe in the significance of education and put our grant dollars behind it. Longwood's founder, my great-great-uncle, Pierre S. DuPont, <clears throat> was one of three cousins who remade the DuPont Company via a leverage buyout around 1900. He also then went on to run General Motors in a prior challenged financial time period. He formed the foundation in 1937, and he left no specific instructions for how the grants should be made. Quite famously, he said, the only rule is that there is no rule. That's a little exciting and a little frightening at the same time. So we look at his philanthropic work to guide us. He focused on the state of Delaware, and he focused on education, particularly public education, and that was a large part of his generosity. He focused his giving, excuse me, so we take our inspiration from him, and in 1917, he was dismayed to find that Delaware had the worst attendance record of the then 48 states. It also spent 30% less per child than the average state in the country. He set about changing that. And in 1918, he formed an education reform initiative. After much analysis, he decided that it was a facilities gap that stood in the way. And he offered to rebuild all of Delaware's schools. The state, concerned that any individual should have that much influence, turned him down. So he offered to rebuild the African American schools, which of course were segregated at the time. That community was very welcoming. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, when the state discovered that the African-American facilities were better than the Caucasian facilities, they rebuilt the Caucasian schools. That's a great illustration to us of the philanthropic, of philanthropic leverage. Not only was he putting his money into education, he also put his time. And he was, for a period of time, for a couple of years, around 1920, served on the State Board of Education. More currently, <clears throat> over the past decade, the foundation has invested nearly 25 million into our local private schools. And these dollars have played a role in the support of the vision and leadership of the private schools that you see the facilities of here today. Where are we going for, from here? Much of it, much as it was for Pierre, our goal in the coming years is to significantly improve education in Delaware. We estimate that the average Delaware high school student is in about the 30th percentile internationally. We're concerned about that, a little bit embarrassed, uh, and we don't like what that may mean for them a couple decades down the road. So we'll continue to invest in the private schools and in our charters and try and help change that average. We appreciate the recognition here today, and uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. DuPont, and please share our congratulations and thanks with the entire Foundation staff. Now I'm proud to present the Seymour Preston Award, named for an individual who served 20 years as trustee chair of the Development Committee at the Lawrenceville School. The award is given annually to a school trustee who has exhibited an exceptional commitment to and leadership in developing voluntary support for his or her institution. This year's recipient is Francis Plimpton Hugh, a passionate and dedicated supporter of the Ravenscroft School in Raleigh, North Carolina for more than 45 years. Ms. Pugh, would you please join me at the lectern?
Ms. Pugh is serving her 44th year on the school's Board of Trustees. She is also Vice Chair of the Board and Chair of the Advancement Committee and serves on the Finance, Buildings and Grounds, and Executive Committees. In her nomination letter, Head of School Doreen Kelly writes that, quote, it is literally hard to imagine where Ravenscroft would be today without Ms. Pugh. Ms. Kelly goes on to explain that in the mid-1960s, Ms. Pugh and her late husband, Dr. William Pugh, led a group of Ravenscroft parents in purchasing 125 acres of land. This purchase enabled the school to move from downtown Raleigh and expand from an elementary school to a K through 12 institution. During the next 40 plus years, the Pew's passion for education and for Ravenscroft in particular continued to grow and is reflected in the fact that they have given to every annual fund, every campaign, every auction, and every special project. Perhaps Ms. Kelly best summed up Ms. Pugh's overall dedication and commitment to the school when she wrote that she has been the champion of every campaign by either serving as a chair, a leadership donor, or its number one cheerleader. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Frances Plimpton Hugh, 2013 Seymour Preston Award winner. Thank you, John, Paul. This is uh, a little overwhelming, such a big crowd. But I am very humbled being included with such a long list of distinguished past winners of this award. Friends, what a pleasure it is to be with you today. And I feel like I can call you my friends because you and I have the same passion. We all share a passion for education and our children. Dr. Pugh, my husband of 55 years, you have loved and supported me all these years and served as medical advisor for Ravenscroft for over 25 years. Two of my Four children are here with us today, and two grandchildren, and dear friends from Winston-Salem and Boston. My rave, I love you, and I appreciate your support all these years. Now, my Ravenscroft family, especially our fantastic head of school, Doreen Kelly, and my fellow trustees, the administrators, and the advancement team who have joined me to accept this great honor. There are more than a dozen of you here today, and I appreciate your support. To the trustees in the room, I would like to thank you for your commitment and your willingness to help develop and fund the vision for our school. I had the great pleasure of receiving a vision in 1968 from trustees Robert and Snow Holding. I now share that vision and the fire that it takes to fund a vision with our new trustees. I'm especially proud for alumni trustees Charlie Winston, our chairman of the board, and Bill Moss, past trustee. How great it is for our alumni to come back and serve on the board. God bless them. Finally, I want to thank all of you because it takes a team to hold true to a vision. It takes great heads like Doreen but it also takes the staff, my vision team, sitting right over there. 
you understand the importance of making our schools the very best they can be. You know the vital role that our volunteers play in your school success. And you recognize the transformative power of philanthropy. In closing, I would like to challenge everybody here today to do something for me. It takes a vision to make a school great, and it takes volunteers and professionals to ask donors to fund the vision. Be bold, communicate your dreams, and ask for the moon. You have nothing to lose. I've always said, let's do it for the kids, and I mean it. Keep doing it for the kids. They need you. We all need you. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for this afternoon. And thank you for this very prestigious award. God bless all of you. Thank you, Ms. Pew, and congratulations once again. The final award to be presented this afternoon is the Robert Bell Crow Memorial Award, named for the longtime Director of Development at Deerfield Academy and one of the pioneers in independent school advancement. The Crow Memorial Award is the highest honor bestowed upon an independent school advancement professional, recognizing dedication to an institution and to the entire profession. I am delighted to announce that this year's recipient is Sherwood, better known as Woody, Haskins, Assistant of, of School for External Affairs at Buckingham Brown and Nichols School in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Mr. Haskins, would you please join us? Mr. Haskins has been a key figure in independent school advancement for more than 30 years. He began his career as a science teacher of 7th and 8th grade students, and later he taught high school and coached varsity hockey and tennis. After six years of teaching, he took on the role of Director of Alumni Affairs at his alma mater, Kimball Union Academy, where he led a diversified alumni program, co-directed the annual fund, and implemented a plan-giving program. From KUA, Mr. Haskins went to Phillips Exeter, where he oversaw a 56% increase in the annual fund, among other accomplishments. Since 1955, Mr. Haskins has served as Assistant Head of School for External Affairs at Buckingham, Brown, and Nichols. In this position, he reorganized and revitalized the school's development operations and led highly successful campaigns that raised $27.5 million and $69 million, respectively. Beyond his fundraising success, Mr. Haskins is known for his willingness to share his expertise with advancement veterans and newcomers alike. He is a strong supporter of CASE and of this conference. In fact, he has served on several CASE-NACE conference committees. In addition, Mr. Haskins chaired a CASE Summer Institute for two years, has authored numerous pieces for CASE publications, and is a recipient of the Crystal Apple Award for teaching excellence at CASE conferences. In his letter of support, former Exeter Academy Director of Alumni Affairs and Development, Jim Thiessen, writes that Mr. Haskins has a special gift in connecting with all people, but that his true calling is his relationships with older alumni. Mr. Thiessen went on to note that Mr. Haskins' success is built on, and I quote, deep, genuine, and lasting friendships not a hit-and-run approach to reach a dollar goal. BBNN Director of Development, 
Key Perry, perhaps summed up Mr. Haskins' best in his nominating letter when he wrote, quote, Woody is the perfect gentleman, kind and caring, yet not without high standards and expectations. Both personally and professionally, Woody has been an incredible asset to the many arenas in which he has traveled. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating this year's winner of the Robert Bell Crow Memorial Award, Mr. Woody Haskins. Woody, would you please say some words? Thank you very much, Paul and John. Uh, many of you don't know that Paul and I started our careers together at Kimball Union uh, in 1979, and little did we know that the two of us would be together on this stage today. I'm truly honored and humbled to be the recipient of this year's Crow Award, but to assure you that this recognition has not caused any ego inflation, let me share the story that upon learning the news of my award, my son stated, Dad, by the time someone reaches your age, shouldn't they have won something? <laughs> they probably should have. <laughs> How blessed we are to be associated with such great schools, in our case, independent schools. So don't you just pinch yourself every once in a while. How fortunate are we to have found this magnificent profession. I have seen such joy and excitement on the faces of attendees here this weekend how truly inspiring that is, and how reinvigorating it is to be among you today. I'm also so grateful to have been associated with three very special independent schools over the past 34 years. They've provided me with a lifetime of professional happiness. In the words of former women's tennis great Althea Gibson, quote, if I've made it, it's because there were an awful lot of people who cared enough to help me along the way." Unquote. A lot of people have cared enough to help me along the way as well. My parents made an enormous sacrifice to, in order to send me to private school and have a private school experience and introduce me to the world of independent school education and ultimately to a professional career. I had the privilege of being mentored by two legends in the field and former Crow Award recipients, David Pond at Kimball Union, now the Director of Development at Deerfield Academy, and Jim Thiessen, former Director of Development at Phillips Exeter Academy. Along the way, I met another legend by the name of Bill Appleyard, who became a personal friend from the Hotchkiss School in Connecticut. Bill passed away suddenly this past year. He knew Bob Crow personally, and there could not have been a more revered profession professional in the business. Bill taught us by example how to be more gracious in all that we do, to continually think about the needs of others, the art and benefits of making genuine and lasting friendships, and how to love a school passionately. I also like to recognize member of my, members of my family who are here today, my wife and son who have been incredibly supportive over the years as I pursued a profession that can be known for extensive travel, late meetings, weekend activities, house guests, and endless phone calls. Their love and patience has been genuinely appreciated. Over the years at these three great schools, I've had the privilege of working with extraordinarily talented and dedicated colleagues and volunteers as well, who, as you all are certainly aware, become members of your second family. You experience all of life's ups and downs with them. And to each colleague and volunteer here today, including our head of school, Rebecca Upham, my current colleagues from BBNN, Janet, Dudley, and Kate, Katie, and for Brett Chambers from Case, who's been an enormous research, resource for me over the years, and for those others around the country, thank you for all that you've done individually and collectively as a team. You have truly been different make, difference makers in every respect and for including me in your professional family as well. Finally, I'm also enormously appreciative of the amazingly rewarding experience I've had for the past 18 years at Buckingham Brown and Nichols School. 
I vividly remember the day that I was hired. I asked for the support of the board, the head, and the school community. And I received a resolute response, absolutely. Eighteen years later, I'm so grateful to report that this steadfast support has never ceased and is in fact stronger than ever today. How many individuals are fortunate enough to have had a similar experience in their lifetime? After 34 years in the advancement profession, I have come to know many of you here today. I'm older than most and countless others around the country. Thank you for being such wonderfully generous colleagues, for sharing your expertise with me, for nurturing and mentoring me, and for becoming and remaining true friends. Let me conclude my remarks by referring back to Althea Gibson's words, which summarize my final thoughts to you today. Sometimes the journey has been a bewildering, challenging and exhausting experience, but I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Thank you again to all those at Case NIS for this truly meaningful award. Congratulations, Woody. On behalf of CASE, I would like to applaud our Grand, Circle, uh, Grand Gold Circle of Excellence Award winner and the 2013 Independent School Award recipients for their devotion to schools and by extension to students. Your service to independent schools makes them stronger and more dynamic and ensures that they will endure for generations to come. I would also like to thank CCS for sponsoring this event and allowing us to honor the best who are among us. Now, we'd like to take photos of our winners, so after the program, please stand over here and we'll do the photos. And with that, I will conclude the awards program. Thank you so much for attending and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>